Okay, so you remember I said that the eigenvalues are completely independent when we get to powers p that are at least n. Um, or maybe I didn't actually precisely state that, but it's true. It's been proven that the eigenvalues of the matrix become completely independent and, ran and uniform over the unit circle when the power p is at least n. And from that, we can um, diagonalize the matrix because unitary matrices are diagonalizable and use that to um, calculate the distribution. When p is um, less than or equal to n, we have this formula for the eigenvalues. Um, actually, I'm not going to bother to write it. It's kind of ugly. But basically what it says is we can pick a bunch of distributions from smaller matrices. And if we just add them all together, they get the larger matrix. So this a to the 10th here is really just picking 10 different 5 by 5 matrices, or rather picking their eigenvalues. Um, and that fact generalizes even when you don't have nice divisibility conditions. Um, so basically, that's what we use to analyze. And then there are, there's a well-known function for the distribution of the eigenvalues, which is not that ugly if you, get to, if you look at relatively small matrices. Here. Could you uh, use the eigenvalues, uh, this distribution, to derive a measure of the randomness of the uh, matrices? Um, the question is if you can use the eigenvalues to derive a measure of the randomness of the matrices. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean. The, I mean, the matrices are... The, the, the greater powers have less clumping in the okay. eigenvalues. Okay, okay. Um, I don't know if that's possible to do it. It probably is. I don't know exactly what tools you would use to do that. So, so questions about the applications to telephones. I'm really bad at this. Um, so basically, as I understand it, what you, for, in telephone encryption, what you need is a large man random matrix that you end up multiplying your data by to encrypt it. Um, and the reason it's important to under actually understand the random matrices instead of just knowing how to pick them is that the, the I guess, obvious algorithm for picking a random orthogonal or unitary matrix is to pick a number of random, um, normally distributed real numbers, and then orthonormalize the matrix. The problem is that takes a while. Um, I believe it's O of n cubed. And it's been understanding random matrices allows us to look at, um, to use the properties of random matrices to generate matrices which are slightly re less random but a lot easier to generate. Um, so in general, understanding the properties of random matrices lets you generate them more easily. And I believe the current, um, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, the current, um, you can now do it in n log n, O of n log n steps to generate a close enough orthogonal matrix. When you defined your less than dot relation, you carefully avoided odd powers. Why was that? Um, so the question is about the less than dot equation and avoiding odd powers, and a question about why that was. So basically, um, things work out more nice. Um, you've got basically the absolute value of x. You're taking the moments of the squared magnitude. Um, and basically, the problem is that we don't want to have to take non-integer powers of things, because then it gets a lot more complicated. Um, and yeah. Oh, is one half. The absolute value of x to the 1 doesn't look all, all that non-integer. <laughs> Yeah, but it, I mean, it has a square root in it. Um, and let me just think what we actually. Um, so, so the problem is that then we start having to do things like calculating non-integer moments of uh, some underlying distributions. Um, and that's not necessarily nice, because um, there's a lot of gamma functions involved. And so we, and it's generally the gamma function of a bunch of integers, like some, linear, you know, some sum of integers over two, and if we make those non, and that's relatively nice, you get some square root of pi's, but it's not a big deal. If we make those have be over four, then you're not necessarily going to be able to work it out easily. All right, it's over here. Uh, so, is there a simple reason why, if you raise it to the nth power, uh, the eigenvalues become exactly independent? So the question is, is there a simple reason why, if you raise your matrix to the nth power, the eigenvalues become exactly independent? So I was saying that you can basically pick from a number of smaller matrices, um, such that, uh, let me get back to, 
should use my links. Okay, um, so that if I pick the eigenvalues of A to the 10th, they're gonna be effectively picking 10 five by five matrices. Well, I, if I pick the eigenvalues of A to the 50th, they're gonna be picking 50 one by one matrices. And the eigenvalue of a one by one matrix is just the entry of the matrix, which is just gonna be um, random on the unit circle. And if I pick the eigenvalue of um, A to the 51st, then I'm picking 50 one by one matrices and a zero by zero matrix. And so we can just throw out all the zero by zeros. So when P is at least N, you just end up adding terms that don't matter. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>